The car of the future is coming, but nobody knows when. It could arrive next month, next year, in the next decade, or even on Tuesday. The car of the future will be cleaner, safer, more comfortable, and offer features that you've never even dreamed of before. Things potentially like a nuclear fusion reactor, full autonomy so you never have to drive yourself again, and of course, all of the latest assistance features like adaptive blind spot recognition, sign assist departure centering. But regardless of what it looks like or the features offered, the car of the future is coming and you can help build it right now. I'm Craig Cole and I ask the deep, thought-provoking questions so you don't have to. Why should I care about future generations when I live today, right now? Well... What emotions do the robots feel? To learn about the car of the future, what it is, the technology involved, and much more, I'm sitting down with one of Magna's foremost powertrain experts for another scintillating one-on-one -on -one interview. Now, I've never done this before in one of these little interview videos, but to be fair, I've never sat down with a celebrity. So I was just curious, if I hand that to you right here, <laughs> would you be so kind as to put your autograph on here, ah, William? William, William Frawley. Frawley. I mean, you're, you're no an American legend. No relation that I know of, but yes, for sure. This but is very you. Similar you wear your hair sure. the same That's way. Just, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Ron Frowley, not, unfortunately, William Frowley, who is, to be fair, much more interesting. Um, we're here to talk about the car of the future, not America's favorite television show, but um, give people a general idea of who you are, what you've done. Sure, Craig. So I actually started in the industry in the powertrain space more than 40 years ago. Uh, started a company, General Motors, in 1982. I've heard of them. Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, I've worked on really every possible powertrain system that you can think of, uh, from manual transmissions all the way through to complete propulsion systems for battery electric vehicles. But what's happening now is really incredible even compared to that, and, and it's really an exciting time to be in the powertrain. But the car of the future, what is it? When will it arrive? I can pencil it in for next week if you think that's coming. Probably a little soon. Um, I would say it's about developing and bringing to market technologies that make the car safer, cleaner, more sustainable, more comfortable for the, for the operator, for the user, basically. That's all very boring. What about excitement? Yeah, so from an excitement standpoint, certainly drivability and performance are part of that, I would say for sure, no question about it. I, I think we believe the car of the future will be electric. It will be autonomous. Um, it will feature, it'll have a lot of features associated to it that you maybe think about more with your phone today that will be, you know, relative to, to a car. So autonomy, connectivity, electrification. Absolutely. What role do you think rickshaws will play in the future? Is human power a viable source for transportation going forward? Personally, I mean, I think the car of the future really could be the rickshaw of yesteryear. Okay. They're clean, yes. comfortable, sustainable, stylish. Comfortable. Affordable. I question the comfortable part. Well, it depends on how you design them, right? Performance, maybe questionable. Sustainable, for sure. Are they autonomous? Probably not. Are... And no computer chips needed. Think about that. I've, I've thought long and hard about it. And I think it's a great idea. Because it is. Um, what electrification technologies does Magna currently offer? Do you guys do hybrid systems, electric motors, inverters? Double A batteries, perhaps? Everybody needs a double A now and then. Start on the tail end and say uh, we don't produce or design double A batteries, but you in terms consider of it, your sales will go up. <laughs> in terms of electrification of powertrains, we absolutely provide every possible alternative there is that's out there. One thing that a lot of people do not know, maybe don't know about Magna, is that we've been producing electric powertrain systems for more than a decade. Uh, we produced, we designed and produced the entire electric propulsion system for the Ford Focus battery electric vehicle. That went into production in 2012. We have extensive- A lot of learnings from that. A lot of learnings from that, and that was forward. 10 years ago. Yeah. So we've had lots of experience on many, many programs of different powertrain configurations that use 
electrification technology. And How far has the technology advanced from that Focus EV up until today? Very, it's a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, I would say very but, significantly for yeah. sure. So a lot of the focus in the advancement in technologies area is on, is on efficiency improvements because when you talk about an electric vehicle, in the end, it's a lot of it is about efficiency, which translates to range, right? How far can I drive my electric car? On the other side, if you can use that extended efficiency to reduce battery capacity, then you can you can reduce the weight of the vehicle, reduce the cost of the vehicle. And that's the other area beyond efficiency, I would say cost, because it's important to keep these systems at a level that they're affordable for the consumers. Mm -hmm. Because we, we want to sell products. We want to put yeah. products in the market, right? Um, but shifting gears, which you don't necessarily have to do in an EV, what about alternative propulsion technology? We've got EVs, we've got hybrids, but there's also, you know, hydrogen or biofuels. I would say we're not working on specifically developing biofuels or hydrogen, but what I would tell you is that both can be used in combustion engines to either reduce or completely eliminate those tailpipe emissions, CO2 in particular. Hydrogen is also used in fuel cell vehicles, so it's a, an alternate way to generate electric power and energy that can be used to propel our, our powertrain system. So I do think we'll see uh, continued development and exposure to those, those products as well in the industry. So no plans to buy up a bunch of farmland and start doing corn ethanol? No? The one area that we're not into that I know of is farmers. So okay, farming, well, farming, but it's important. We need it for sure but Magna's not doing it. <laughs> Might be another opportunity along with those double A's. I'm just saying, I'm not, I can't tell you what to do, but I will strongly suggest. We'll take note of that and... Please do. I'm, I'm sure the board would love to hear my ideas. <laughs> I'm sure they would. I love to hear my ideas. I know you guys do too. But um, speaking of alternative propulsion, is steam power on Magna's radar at all? People say EVs give you instant torque, but so does steam. Plus you get a super cool whistle. At this point, it's predominantly about electrification systems. So. If we might change your mind here, go ahead and open that up. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you guys know I'm a strong steam advocate. Hold that up so the folks can see. What does that say? I choose, I choose, choose steam power. Thank you. Steam I do power. too. Still need something to generate the steam though. Well, you can use batteries or something. I don't know. Only they burn pretty well. All right, at the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> All aboard. Car of the future, steam power, coming to a dealership near you. That's yours to keep. Well, thank we you. We will Chris. bill you later. I will cherish that. But, of course, it's not just technology. Magna also manufactures vehicles for OEMs. It's a part of the business I think a lot of people don't necessarily know about. And that's something you guys have done for years, right? Magna, let's, let's say it this way. Magna is the largest automotive supplier in North America. We're the fourth largest automotive supplier in the world. We design and manufacture just about every subsystem that goes into a vehicle. And as you mentioned, we also assemble vehicles for our OEM customers. I think that level of knowledge, experience, information helps us to optimize systems across the company. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that gives us a competitive advantage in the marketplace when we start to talk about an optimized powertrain system. I think we can do things that other companies cannot do because of the inherent knowledge that exists in the company and the fact that we can and do work together. I mean, so if you want to start your own car company, make sure you contact Magna today for all of your contract manufacturing needs. In fact, I'm in discussions right now to get my own rickshaw design mass produced. Very I think it's going to come out of Graz in Austria there. What are the challenges in building a car of the future? OEMs I imagine they always want differentiation, right? They don't want their product to be the same as their, what their competitors are offering. I would say that powertrain electrification specifically does offer them the ability to differentiate. So because of the controllability of that powertrain system, they can use it to enhance brand image mm -hmm. or even, even in the same company to have two different brands or two different models or name badges on a car. Uh, that perform differently just by controlling that electric propulsion system differently. So I think it gives them a greater degree of flexibility. You, you can use software with internal combustion engine vehicles, but you don't have the same level of control. You know, in an electric motor, it's a much more controllable product than, than, a, than a, in a combustion engine. Is. What factors might you adjust with a, an electric power? Track? Current, voltage, you know, those are things that you can, you can directly play with, mm -hmm. obviously. 
Um, you can use torque vectoring systems. There's different things that you can do uh, with the propulsion system to really enhance, as I said, both safety and driving experience overall and comfort. Mm -hmm. I, I have also noticed on our backdrop here, it says Magna Forward for All. Yes. That's a very optimistic slogan. But what if you have to reverse? Do you have to go to another supplier for that? <laughs> that's, that's an interesting question. If you're question parallel too, parking, Frank, for instance, sure you, you got to go forward and right. back. From time to time, you have to go reverse as well, for sure. Is that something you guys provide? We absolutely provide reverse. You do have reverse. Absolutely. Another thing that's very controllable in an electric powertrain system is you can absolutely just run the motor backwards. Okay. Because, I mean, that does say forward, but... Um, Okay. I'll, I, Always <laughs> looking forward. I will take his word for it because I don't know otherwise. <laughs> um, you've spent your life working in powertrains. Yes. There are other divisions at Magna, though. What are some of those divisions and why is powertrain the best one? First of all, the company culture, we do live and breathe as one Magna. Mm -hmm. But within the one Magna culture, there are different groups and divisions. As you said, Magna, beyond powertrain, there's there's seating, there's electronics, there's ex exteriors, there's engineering services, there's the car building, there's frames, there's all kinds of divisions within the Magna organization. Um, and, and we each have our own place in the car, if I say it that way. Um, I think we also see each other in a competitive way. I mean, I, personally, after 40 years in the powertrain space, I, I have a lot of reason to feel that powertrain is the space to be in. I do think uh, powertrain products touch on every aspect of engineering and manufacturing that you could possibly imagine. I think the technology is incredible. I think the technology development that we're doing is incredible. And I think the culture is awesome. The people are awesome. Uh, the, well, some of the, the business is awesome. I would, I would say, from my experience, all the people. Yes. Okay, that's a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> we'll, we'll cut very that true. Out. Um, <laughs> what sort of careers are there in building the car of the future? And what kind of people is Magna going to need to do that? I think in the environment that we work in, you need people with all kinds of educational and experience backgrounds. Um, I'm an engineer by experience. Uh, to bring a product like this to market, to bring car systems, powertrain systems to market, you, of course you need product engineering, but you need product development, you need manufacturing engineering, you need program management, IT, supply chain management, sustainability, logistics. You need skilled machine operators. You need people that can maintain equipment. So it's, as I said, really touches on all, I think all aspects and backgrounds of experience and capability. That um, Can you make a good living working at a supplier like Magna? Magna is a company, has a corporate, you know, corporate charter and culture, and for sure remaining competitive in the marketplace means you have to be competitive with, with wages and benefits for your employees as well. So it's a great place to work. As you said, I've I've been with Magna for 20 years now, and I found it to be a great company to work for. That's at least two decades. Exactly. So they keep it's you- exactly they keep, two decades. <laughs> they keep you coming back for more every yes, day. Yes, they do. Wow. Um, if you do get your foot in the door at Magna, get hired here, does the company offer any programs to help perhaps with additional education if you want to go and get, say, a master's degree or something? Absolutely. There's tuition assistance programs. There's a, I would say there's also a broad range of internal uh, training programs that, that Magna offers to the employees too, right you know, right here in the facility that you work in and right within the company. Perhaps this isn't the right term, but on-the-job training. So if you're in one department and you want an opportunity elsewhere, sure, you can get the, the skills you need to do that job. Another thing about the beauty of Magna, as I said, there's when you look at all the different divisions and the number of people that work here, if I want to go work in the seating group or whatever, there's, a, there's opportunities to move around within the company as well. So... so your degree is in mechanical engineering, I think you said, right? That's right, Craig. I went to Lawrence Technological University. So you must be pretty good at math. I would say all my life I've been very good at math. Yes. Well, that's convenient because I have some calculus problems here I was having a real hard time with. I don't know if, if you could just answer those for me. Show your work, please. We need to know that you didn't just use AI to figure that out. Definitely takes me back. I'll be sure to engage one of our interns. We do hire a number of college interns here, which benefits them as a student and benefits us as a company as well. I will find a math major, we'll get this question answered and be happy to bring it back to you. Anyway, William, I'm sorry, Ron, <laughs> thank you so much for sitting down and talking about electrification as it applies to the car of the future. This was a lot of fun. Thank Although you, I am Kurt. a little bit disappointed we couldn't get this sign. Yes. But maybe 
you'd get <laughs> at least your last name. Look at that. There you go. You, you can have this You're if you best. don't want to sign it. If you do sign it, I'm going to need it back. Okay, very Thank good. Thank you much. Thank you Look so much. Look at that. We got William on there. Thank you so much, Craig. It's best been a pleasure. Friends. It's been Thank a pleasure. You, sir. Thank you much very much. Appreciate it, too. Thank you. And there you have it, the car of the future. It's a big deal, it's coming, and you can help shape what it is by getting a career in the automotive industry. Next up, if you're into cars but might prefer something a little bit more hands-on, click right over here to learn all about automotive manufacturing. It could be the career for you.